couple of years ago, we decided to make our first vegetable garden. And I didn't know much about gardening. I still don't know much about gardening. But we were told that it's pretty simple. Take some topsoil, put it down in an area in the backyard. Then you can buy a couple of plants or seeds, and you put it down, and you start watering. And over the course of time, after it's tucked into the soil, one sees that eventually uh, the plant starts to grow. So we decided we were going to plant cucumbers and uh, tomatoes. And each day, one of the kids would have their job be that they would go out and water the plant. And day by day, they would think to themselves, is it growing, is it growing? And all of a sudden, over the course of a couple of weeks, we see that it starts to grow and gets bigger and bigger. And there's a tremendous sense of accomplishment uh, when we see that eventually it looks like we're going to have some big cucumbers that we're going to be able to, to, uh, to eat. Lo and behold, one day when we decided that the day had come to take off the cucumbers, we found that the cucumbers were gone. Apparently, the rabbits uh, beat us to it. Lesson learned, we had to put a little, bit of, a little bit of a gardening fence around our garden. But the reason why I mentioned this was that the feeling of success, the feeling of accomplishment when we saw that these vegetables were getting bigger and bigger every day really meant a great deal. And when it came to the agricultural society, which was at the time of the Torah, uh, the farmer would become very, very happy at the period of time when he was ready to harvest his field. Here he had put so many hours into seeding his field and, and making sure that it was watered and irrigated every day. And finally it comes to the season in which he's ready to reap the benefits of his hard work. And the Torah says, as you are going to, start taking out all of the grain and start using it and making it productive and creating bread from it eventually. Bear in mind that there are two mitzvahs that you have to keep. The first is the mitzvah of peah, which means that when it comes to the corner of your field, leave it alone. Don't touch it. You can't cut the grain at the corner of your field. That's number one. The second is, is that when you're harvesting, uh, make sure that if you leave something, if you miss something and you leave it over, don't go back for it. If you drop it, then you just have to leave it there. And there's a machlokas in the Gemara about how many pieces, how many ears of grain uh, could one, uh, does one, is one required to just leave over as opposed to going back if there was a large portion. In any event, these two areas, the corner of your field and that which you've left over, that which you've dropped, is supposed to be reserved for the poor. And that's the mitzvah that the, Harvard, that the, that the farmer is taught, that even though Hashem has blessed him, with uh, this incredible wealth through the success of his planting and, and the grain, he has to keep in mind those who are less fortunate. He has to keep in mind the poor and make sure that he has an area that he keeps for them. Which brings us, begs the question, Rav Aram Bax to ask this question, and says, why would the Torah not simply tell the farmer, look, when you take that grain and you turn it into flour and you eventually bake bread, so give a couple of loaves of bread to the poor person. Why are we requiring the farmer to leave a portion of his field so that the poor person has to do the work or leave the, the gleanings for the poor person and let the poor person then eventually make it into flour and use it for bread. It's an unfinished product. Why are we giving the poor person an unfinished product as opposed to giving them the finished product, the, 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 the eventual uh, benefits that we've gotten from our hard work? Let's share with the poor person. Why make them work? So he answers as follows. He says that the poor person doesn't have any of their own property. They don't have any feeling or sense of, of accomplishment. They're a poor, poor person. They're just collecting from, from someone else. They're never accomplishing or doing something on their own. That's, that's just the way it's been for them, and it's difficult for them. And they struggle on an emotional level because of that. So here the Torah is saying, leave for the poor person so that they can take the grain, make it into flour, bake bread, and have bread for themselves. But don't give them the finished product. Because if you give them the unfinished product, then they will get a sense of satisfaction at the ability to be productive. And the lesson is for us that every human being needs to feel a, 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 a sense of accomplishment and productivity. We need in our lives to feel that we're doing something, that we're making a difference, either in our lives or the lives of someone else, that we're doing something with our own hands 
that is something that wasn't around before our efforts uh, were in place. And I think it's a very important for less, lesson for us in life. Sometimes uh, we have uh, very productive moments and sometimes we have less productive moments. Sometimes we are in uh, better uh, standing or better moods and sometimes we are in not such great moods. And the way in which that we can constantly give ourselves that push is by accomplishing, by producing, by making sure that even in the most smallest sense that we keep on working with our own hands and we feel a sense of satisfaction that we are able to accomplish by ourselves instead of constantly relying on others. So although the poor person may have received the grain from the farmer, it is the bread that he made with his own hands that really is the bread that he lives on. Yes, the farmer provided the grain, but it's the satisfaction to the poor person and gives him the strength to continue because of the fact that he accomplished by the work of his own hands. May we be zochet to also see the success that we accomplish with our own hands. Thank you for listening. Have a good Shabbos.